Now this is the cut down short version of this video. So if you really want to get into some extra hints and tips and want to learn the psychology behind why these rules are these rules, then make sure you check out the full version. So I'm going to give you just nine rules to help you make an excellent presentation on any topic related to science or engineering, technology or mathematics. If you are going into a career related to science or engineering, you will have to spend a lot of time communicating your ideas to people around you. They might be other people on your research team. They might be people within your organization, whether it's a university or a business, or it might be communicating ideas to the general public. If you follow these rules, you will be making an excellent presentation at the international level. Rule number one is engage your audience. It is the most important rule. And if you don't remember anything else from this video, at least remember that. If you engage your audience, you will be making presentations at least at the OK level. To engage your audience means to make a connection with them. We do this first by facing our audience. Now, of course, sometimes you have to turn off to the side, maybe with a laser pointer and point to something in your presentation. But as soon as you can, you want to get back and face square on to your audience. And as much as possible, you want to be making eye contact. Now, the same thing applies to online conferences and presenting to a webcam. You still have to engage the webcam. You don't want to be doing this, looking at your slides, looking at your cursor and talking to your screen because people can see that you need to be talking directly to your webcam as much as you can. I know that it is difficult for many people to look other people in the eyes and to face uh, forward. There is a trick. You can do this. In this case here, I am looking not at the eyes of my audience, but at the desk behind them. Rule two is practice, practice, practice. You need to practice your talk properly before you do it. Very simply, you need to do it exactly as you will do it on the day. You start by introducing your name. Good afternoon. I'm da 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 da. And you do everything all the way through your presentation until the very last word. In between that, you do everything you will expect to do at the presentation. You will stand up. You will point with a pretend laser pointer at your pretend presentation screen. And you will look around the room and engage your imaginary audience. Rule three communicate. Don't worry about making nice sentences. People want to understand the content of your talk. They don't care if you're English or if your sentences are good, well-formed sentences. As long as you communicate what you are trying to say, it'll work. For example, something that goes like, we make catalyst, uh, but Problem. Problem is ligand, very unstable. As long as you are explaining the facts, getting that information, getting that technical information from your brain into their brain, that's all they want to know about. Use good delivery. This means your voice needs to project right the way to the back of the room. You do not want to be talking like this. Things like uh, catastrophic weather, such as um, forest fires. In order to project your voice to the back of the room, you need to make sure that you are standing up, of course, and you need to breathe from your stomach, from your belly. This is what singers do. Expand your, your belly as you breathe in and then speak from there. This will bring your voice out. It'll bring the more bass tones in your voice out. 
and it will help your voice reach the back of the room. The next most important aspect of delivery is to be enthusiastic. Sound excited about your presentation. Make it sound like it's the best thing ever, even if you're really bored of it. And let's be honest, if you've been working on this project for maybe a year, or two or three years even, you probably have got a bit bored of it by this time. If you're not enthusiastic, nobody else will be. But going the other way, if you sound enthusiastic, if you sound excited, everybody will be excited, even if it's really boring. We do have to be careful that we don't push things a little bit too much the other way. If we sound super bright and excited about everything, all the way through the whole talk, then we lose that emphasis. If we say, today I am going to talk to you about my catalyst. My catalyst is amazing. We did this, we did that, we did the other thing. Then everything is up here and people can't see your important points then. So what you need to do is work out what is background information. You should have a mid-level, a level for background information, background information, background information, and then this is important. And background, 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 and this is important. So, absolutely remember to be enthusiastic, but remember to tone it down to find that balance. Technical communication presentations should be fairly slow because on your slides, you will have a whole range of complex topics and ideas. And your audience needs time to listen to these ideas. And they need time to think about it and to process it and to then say, all right, okay, that's what he means. People will not only be able to listen to you more, they will want to listen to you more. Rule number five is do not read your presentation. If you read your presentation directly, two bad things will happen. Firstly, you will not be engaging your audience. Secondly, you will sound like you are a robot. If you practice properly, then you won't need to write anything down. You can have notes, just basic things to remind you, say this, say this, say that thing. But don't have your exact sentences written out. If you try and remember your sentences, at some point you're going to forget what you want to say. And then you're going to be really stuck. If you're finding this helpful, don't forget to hit the like button. And if you subscribe, you'll know when the next videos come out. And if you have any questions or thoughts, just put them down in the comments. Rule number six, take mini breaks. In the middle of your talk, you will forget what you want to say. Even if you've practiced the way I've told you to practice, very simply, you take a mini break. You can literally take one or two seconds, even three seconds if you want to, no one will notice. If you're really stuck, a little trick is to stop and take a sip of water. What you don't want to do is panic. If you panic, it's impossible to remember the next thing. Rule number seven is watch your time. Timekeeping is so important. You've got people coming after you, so they don't want to be kept waiting for their presentation. Also, you have your audience, they don't want the presentation to go on for longer than they're expecting. Certainly if you're the only person or the last person presenting, they'll want to get away again and get on with whatever it is that they want to do. So if you make people wait, they start to get irritated with you and you don't want that. But more important than that even, is that you want to protect your question time. There will be maybe five or 10 minutes for questions afterwards. If you've been working on a research project for a year or, or three years or however long, talking about all of that work in just 10 minutes is almost impossible. So how do you fix that problem? Well, what most people do is they put in as much as they can and speak really quickly. And this completely destroys their delivery. Rather, what you have to do 
is take material out until you can just speak for 10 minutes at a proper slow measured pace and that is hard it is really difficult to decide what stays in and what comes out don't worry about missing out small details that maybe you think are important because if your audience wants to know about them they'll ask you about them in the question and answer session afterwards and then what you must do is watch your time how do you do that well there's a couple of different ways the easiest way and my favorite way is to use presenter tools on the computer I have a screen with my present screen it has all of my timings on there a stopwatch the actual clock time and I can just glance at that screen anytime I want and just check how I'm doing rule eight is get into the presentation room no later than 10 minutes before and set up your presentation if it's on your computer then set it up on your computer make sure that your laptop will communicate with the projector properly make sure that you've transferred the files properly make sure everything is working the way you expect it to work and you want to make sure that you've got time to fix whatever problems that you come across HDMI not working is a classic one videos that just don't work for some reason because a file or a link is missing you might even need time to go running back to an office or something know your audience who are you speaking to almost every presentation will have to be different because you will be making it to a different group of people if I am giving a presentation to other people who work in my field I will have to change it for an audience of general chemists if I am giving a presentation on that topic to the general public well yes then I've got to change it again make sure you are thinking who is my audience who am I talking to when you are given the chance to present something for that let's say 10 minutes or however long your presentation is the audience have given you permission to be the boss it means the people in the room give you permission to behave in a way that you don't normally behave they will accept you facing them straight on they will let you do that where maybe they wouldn't let you do that in a normal conversation We must not. Sorry. That take the CO2 out of the air. But the problem with these, excuse me, <clears throat> the problem with these is that. So, there we go. Nine rules for top international presentations as long as you think about it and tick those rules off and say yes I'm doing that yes I'm doing that if you do your practice properly and incorporate these rules into your practice then you'll be fine and you will be making a top international presentation